Defect Levels Handbook. What the FDA report holds inside is a margin of just how many rodent hairs, maggots, and a number of other filthy things that are allowed in what we consume. Just about anything that we eat is found in this report. So if you don't want to know what furry creature or gross insect could be in your pantry, we'll understand. Yeah, this is one of those things where like innocence is something you want to hold on to. You really don't want to learn these kinds of things that are going to make you just think about whatever you're eating, drinking, consuming at any given time. I remember when I was a kid, like somebody was telling me that like there's all sorts of like bug parts in your peanut butter, you know. Um, but that I can kind of look past because it's just extra protein. But yeah, like I don't know if I necessarily want to think about all the little little rat toes that touched my, uh, my, my, my goldfish before I ate them. I don't want to think about uh, maggots and mold while I'm consuming uh, an apple or a banana. FDA, I, I love what you do, but yeah, I'll leave that to the professionals and I'm going to live my life in ignorance. Ooh, now here's a good one. Symptoms. That's right. Googling your symptoms. Never, ever, ever do this, man. You're not a medical professional. You don't know what's going on. You don't have the context or the, the experience to diagnose yourself with something. <laughs> I'd say you, you, you think you've got like in, an incurable like life-ending disease, but it's like no, you have a head cold. Like you're like, oh my god, like this mark shut up my body, it must mean I'm cursed and I'm going to die in five years. No, it's just part of aging. Never Google the symptoms. My gosh, you're just like, you're there, you're gonna get surgery, you're gonna have cancer. Mm -mm. Go see someone. <laughs> Talk to a medical professional. Don't be a, oh, what's the word? Someone who thinks they have like everything. They've got all the all the illnesses. Every time somebody else tells them about like an illness, they go, oh, I've got that. Uh, hypochondriac, bow. In October of 2006, Nikki Katsuras perished in a car crash at age 18 in Lake Forest, California. Katsuras had been driving her father's Porsche before losing control of the vehicle and colliding with a toll booth. The result of the crash was gruesome enough that Katsura's parents were not asked to confirm her identity, but photographs of the scene were still taken, according to protocol. California Highway Patrol officers Aaron Reich and Thomas O'Donnell later admitted to leaking said photographs onto the internet by emailing them to friends. Despite the family's best efforts to remove them, photographs of the horrific Katsura's crash scene remain relatively easy to find on the internet to this day. Yeah, I'm not Googling that. I'm not. Uh... I don't need to see no, a, 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 see a young person with their the head blown image. off. Yeah, sure, head was detached. I'm, I'm grossed out that they would send it to their friends. Can you imagine them thinking that that's okay? Ugh, I mean, so it's angry. probably just they're, they're like all like police officers who have seen some stuff and they're just like, ha just part of the job, right boys? But still, that's so horrific. Yeah. Oh man, and like even though it was blurred, you could still see You could make it, it out, yeah. Oh, I know about this one. A small subreddit where the user may click on a link and have a 50-50 chance of witnessing something sweet and innocent or something extremely grotesque. Yes, this is this is one I've, I've, I've scrolled through and I've never clicked on anything because I am just, not not down to be taken by surprise. It's like, yeah, they get like a hamburger or like a degloved arm. You get like a baby bunny or like a massive car wreck with all of the, you know, people still in their cars turned into paste, you know? Like it's just, it's something else. And it's one of those things where it's like, why would you even want to do that? You know, it's like, you're gonna click on this thing and like give yourself like secondary trauma for like witnessing that. <laughs> you know, you're gonna hurt your, hurt your brain by taking in some of these like despicable things when you assumed it would be much nicer. Crocodile, oh no. <laughs> Isn't that a, uh... oh wow. They, they, Vice did a documentary on this, right? Am I mixing this up with bath salts or is crocodile and bath salts interconnected. Are they the same thing? I don't know. The street name for desomorphine, a morphine derivative of powerful opioid effects, which has been used as a substitute for heroin in Russia and Ukraine. The side effects of the often illegally produced drugs include toxic substances, which can cook the skin or cause large-scale tissue infection or damage in the ejected area. It's known as a flesh-eating drug. Yowza. I mean, I, I guess. Like, all, all 
hard drugs are going to get you there someday, where your body will not function the way it used to. Not even the soft ones, let's be real, use it enough. But, uh, boy howdy, if it's cooking the skin at the injection site while you're using it, that's raunchy. You've heard of Jack the Ripper, but have you heard of the Rostov Ripper? If you haven't, don't Google don't him. Google. Don't. The Rostov Ripper, also known as the Butcher of Rostov or the Red Ripper, was an active Soviet serial killer from 1978 to 1990. Yep, that's a 12-year oh, spree for which the evil individual Andrei Romanovich Chikikito eventually confessed to taking the lives of 52 people during this period. Again, like anything that he narrates, I can't fully take seriously. Like when he was saying the guy's name, it didn't sound right. Chikikito. I know. Um, oh, chills. Yeah, that's like. Oh, you got chills. You you were you were you were handed some chills by chills. Yeah. That's wonderful. I mean, he's doing his job then. This kind of stuff, like any serial killer stuff, like it's always, like I'm like, I'm like, I'm torn. Like do I want to Google it and learn more and then like risk like seeing all of like the, the people that died and like potentially like, like crime scenes? See, I've been there. I've done it. You've been at a crime scene after a serial killer was there? No, no. But I definitely Googled stuff for like most amazing top 10. Oh yeah. And I've definitely seen photos I shouldn't have seen from crime scenes and now I just feel like I'm numb to it all. Until you actually show up at Until one. I actually show up yeah. and I'm like, ah! Like you go and you see an apartment and you I actually mean, just, like there's no, like a corpse there. <laughs> and then they'd be like, get right. this DNA away. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what they would say. They would call it DNA. Get out of there. Get the DNA away. Get that DNA out of here. We don't want to see it. Lampreys, I love lampreys. Honestly, like as freaky as they are and as much as I would absolutely hate to have one anywhere on my body, um, they're just so cool. They're just so neat. I remember uh, at the, uh, the the ROM before uh, before COVID hit, they had a bloodsuckers exhibit and I got to learn all about lampreys. I got to see one pressed up against the glass. Although, you know what? The more I think about it, the less cool they are because they are invasive species and they can ruin ecosystems. So actually lampreys, you're not cool. You're causing a lot more problems than you're worth with your big leachy mouths and <laughs> many teeth that suck blood. Oh, I hope there's just like plenty of footage of gross lampreys playing over what I'm talking right now. <laughs> that would be perfect. Really sell the point. Oral thrush, also called oral candidiasis, is a condition where the fungus candida albicans, candida albicans accumulates on the lining of your mouth. Normal organism in your mouth, but sometimes it can overgrow and cause symptoms. Creamy white lesions on your tongue or inner cheeks. Sometimes oral thrush can spread to the roof of your mouth, your gums, or your tonsils, or the back of your throat. Mmm. So good and tasty. Mmm. A body farm is a research facility where decomposition can be studied in a variety no, of settings. No, that's a thing! The aim is to get a better understanding of the decomposition process, permitting the development of techniques for extracting <laughs> information blurred, yeah. from Glad human remains. Nicknamed the Body Farm, oh. the research laboratory in Knoxville provides a unique opportunity for CSI teams to replicate murder scenes in the most realistic setting possible. I mean, I guess you'd need to do that to get good at your job. True. But that's hella creepy, especially with the name Body Farm. Body Sounds hey. like they're like creating human bodies, like just yeah. like replicating cadavers. Creating them together. Making it out of like Beyond Meat, you know, like yeah. sewing together oh, like soy bodies. <laughs> Stuffing them. Oh. Yummy. No. Because farm like implies like you're growing it to eat, yeah. correct? Yeah. Not great. Not a great way to go by. Cultivating. Oh no, I don't even want to finish that sentence. Just imagine like knowing, like you know, like you gave up your body to science, like fantastic. Yeah, but then like somehow, good. you know, you're in the afterlife, you're looking down, you're like, great, <laughs> I'm a body farm body. All these CSI trainees are gonna be poking me with sticks, leaving me out in the woods. Great. Also, you see the cages that they're in, like the yeah. chickens. That's mm -hmm. what freaked me out. How it's they have like. A they have a cage over them as if they're gonna just get up and move. Well, it's like you would think that it was to keep things out, but I like that idea better oh, that it's, it's gonna wake up and <laughs> try to go away. <laughs> what is necrotizing fasciitis? Necrotizing fasciitis is a type of soft tissue infection. 
It can destroy the tissue in your skin and muscles as well as subcutaneous tissue, which is the tissue beneath your skin. Necrotizing fasciitis is most commonly caused by an infection with group A streptococcus, commonly known as flesh-eating bacteria. This is the fastest moving form of the infection. When the infection is caused by other types of bacteria, it typically doesn't progress as quickly and isn't quite as dangerous. So it sounds pretty painful, pretty gnarly. Oh boy, yeah, it just looks like they are rotting, just rotting people. Don't, don't look that up. It's gross and scary, and I'm sorry to anybody who's ever had to deal with it. Here's a good one, the Uncanny Valley. I love the Uncanny Valley. It's just, it's not, I don't think it's mined enough uh, these days. I think at the peak Uncanny Valley was when like CGI wasn't very good yet, and like people tried to make like photorealistic humans and like failed. That space between human and not human. That's why so many people, like Toy Story did well. That's why um, even Toy Story had some Uncanny Valley moments. Any sort of animal animation was fine for a while, especially over like something that was supposed to be a human. Because if the human's not moving right, it is not moving right. Oh boy. Yeah, there's, the, there's, there's a graph. Bring up the Uncanny Valley graph, please. I don't have it on me right now, but boy do I love it. I, I miss I miss the good old days of Lawnmower Man. <laughs> Bring back terrible CGI. I'm tired of seeing this photorealistic nonsense. Come on. It's a dangerous Google search. Jiggers are small sand fleas that are found in sub-Saharan climates and are most prominent during the dry season. The jiggers are parasitic burrowers and are also known as chigo fleas. The parasite lives in soil and sand, but feeds on warm-blooded hosts oh, hey. like animals and humans. In humans, the parasites may burrow in the hands or feet. Oh, I thought they were going to say heads. Ooh, I bet you there's been some found in heads too, Probably. though. Mm -hmm. If you're going to hands and feet, like there's not that much more flesh than you'd find like in a head. Maybe like the back it's and like the neck. Still... No, I'm literally like itchy thinking about it. Parasites Ugh. are nasty. Although we did get the uh, the benefit of the blurred images. Yeah, so we didn't actually. Yeah. You know, I think see. I've I've totally seen one burrow into like, somebody yeah. like while researching for other insect-related oh, videos. I've seen insect removals where they just remove Ooh, the whole and it's like, yeah. It's like huge. <sighs> no thanks. And then they <laughs> then they eat it right away to get no. back at it as revenge. Ew. You take it out of your skin. You said you try to eat you, me. You. I eat you. Boom. Gross. Gotta make sure you crunch down real hard though or else they'll burrow into Stop your belly. Oh, can you imagine they like lay eggs in your intestines? No. I don't want to imagine that. that. Okay, I've actually never seen this. So Ed Gein, famous serial killer, the guy, the uh, the inspiration for old uh, Texas Chainsaw over here. Uh, I've actually never, like I've read all sorts of stuff. I've seen like images of him and maybe his house, but I've never seen a lot of this stuff up close. So there's a human skull as a bowl. I wonder if he ate Cheerios out of there. Some nice fleshy gloves. It's like human leather gloves. Like, do you think like a human hand glove would fit better than a regular glove because it was already a human hand before and it has those like 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 memory hand properties? That fit, is that a mask that he wore or is it like a decoration? Is it a piece of pottery? Terrifying. Ed Gein. Yeah, that's something that like, unless you're like ready for that, that's like the kind of like the entrance to the true crime wormhole. You know, you, you learn about Ed Gein and his house full of human pieces. He only murdered a few people, but he definitely collected a lot of human parts and just made them into things that human parts probably shouldn't be made into. Oh yeah, now this seems like a Photoshop to me. It's like, I, I don't know what that is, but it's definitely not in anybody's skin at the moment. Let's see what we have to say about trypophobia today. What's the actual definition? It's the fear or disgust of closely packed holes. Feel queasy when looking at surfaces that have small holes gathered close together. The head of a lotus seed pod or the body of a strawberry could trigger discomfort in somebody with this phobia. Absolutely. I mean, I don't fully relate to this, but I get it. Like, it's not, it's not natural, all those holes, you know? I'm trying to think of something that would like really cause like some trypophobia. I mean, like maybe like a, a, a coral plant. Uh, a sponge? Would a sponge cause trypophobia? 
Obviously those lotus seed pods, they have people Photoshop those into everything. It's like, look, it's a bunch of like eggs laid in someone from a spider. It's like, no, it's a lotus seed pod and a close up picture of a finger. But hey, I think there is something that like lays eggs like that. Maybe there's a frog out there that has a bunch of holes in its back for its eggs. I feel like that's a thing. Maybe I'm just making that up. Fast food is convenient, cheap, and arguably tasty, but from time to time, consumers get a lot more than they bargain for, and we're not talking about extra curly fries. From weird animal parts to syringes. They found that in hamburgers. I mean, like, aren't, like, like, wouldn't fast food be, like, largely weird animal parts just ground up really tiny to no, start with? No, that's what it is. They, there was something that I read which is, like, in, like, one hamburger, you get, like, 50 cows. Yeah, oh, yeah. Just, it's like, it's, like, like, a weird amalgamation. And you just, like, mash. Yeah, so it doesn't surprise me. Their product control is probably, like, zero because they're, like, just yeah. get it. Just come on. Fast food, guys. It's fast all the way down the chain. No. Although a syringe, I feel, is hard to miss. You know, like, like if you're making a hamburger at your local A and W, I, I don't know how the person behind yeah. the counter is going to miss the syringe <laughs> unless it's like unless a it's, really tiny one. I don't like know. razor blades is one thing, like in Halloween candy, oh, but a no. syringe and a hamburger. Yeah, those are pretty big. Like, unless they just mean like the tip of the needle, but still, it's so be. dangerous. Yeah. And disgusting. Degloving. Oh, I just I was I was talking about degloving before. <laughs> What is degloving? Also called avulsion is the type of severe injury that happens when the top layers of your skin and tissue are ripped from the underlying muscle, connected tissue, or bone. It can affect any part of the body, but is most common in the legs. Degloving injuries are often life-threatening because of the large amounts of blood loss and tissue death. Yeah, I mean, if you're gonna lose all the skin on one part of your body and just like leave all the blood vessels and muscles and bone exposed, yeah, you're probably in a lot of trouble. You can't just plastic wrap that and go about your day. You gotta get some help immediately. There's a really cool scene <laughs> in a really bad movie um, <laughs> where <laughs> it's it's escape room, but not the Sony one. Um, I forget if it was 2017. There's like there's three escape rooms that came out around 2017, and I always mix them up. But there's a scene where like 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 noxious gas comes into the room that they're in and it starts like breaking down their skin and making them melt and this one guy's arm just gets totally degloved like he's like Aah! and it comes right out oh, it's so cool <laughs> but that's only in movies it's only cool in movies when it happens in real life that sucks carbuncle a cluster of boils painful pus-filled bumps that form a connected area of infection under this under the skin who mm, i don't like carbuncle under the skin, oh, ah, uh, go see a doctor. Don't Google it, go see a doctor. Show the doctor, they'll help you. <laughs> no, no thank you. Oh my goodness gracious. Another unsolved case that will keep you up at night. This one occurred in Keddie, California in 1981. Four lives were taken in cabin 28 of the Keddie Resort. A mother, her son, her daughter, and a friend. The daughter was not found at the scene, but was recovered three years later in Camp 18 in 1984. One of the other daughters discovered the scene after returning to the cabin from a sleepover. Just the whole family wiped just like that. That's crazy. Did they say it was an unsolved mystery? So they don't know. I actually don't know if he said it was unsolved. Maybe we have to Google it. Maybe that's the caveat. Now I want to try and figure this out. I'm Nancy Drew over here. I'm going to get to the bottom of this. Don't you worry. Keddy 28. Oh. And they said something about cabin 18. So like, did she, like, like somebody else at the Keddy cabins was the killer and was Maybe. never caught? Maybe. That's crazy. Probably the concierge. The concierge of the Keddy cabin killers was Ooh. never caught. Keddy cabin killer. Keddy cabin killer. Never caught. Concierge. Three times best. Keddy cabin, Keddy killer. Just, it's not, it's not, it sounds like you're going to start to do like a Busta Rhymes rap. Keddy, Keddy, Keddy. Calculus bridge. It sounds like the worst math class mixed with a card game old people play. But it looks like something bad happening to teeth. So I wonder what exactly is going on here. It looks like some sort of like, like film has developed on them and the gums are like super receded. Calculus bridge. Also known as tartar is a yellowish or white deposit of minerals that forms on the tooth surface as a result of pre-existing plaque that is hardened. So it's just like a lot of stuff building up on your teeth. Brush your teeth. Floss them too, use mouthwash. But don't brush too hard. Make sure you brush in gentle circles, you know? Like you gotta make sure that you're, uh, you're protecting your gums and not scraping your teeth. The more you know. De-gloving. 
That's an x-ray? I guess they can't really show degloving on YouTube. That's pretty nasty. Also known as avulsion, when the top layers of your skin and tissue are ripped from the underlying muscle, connective tissue, or bone. Common in the legs, but it can be anywhere. Degloving injuries are often life-threatening. Yeah, seriously, you just lose all the skin. Like, degloving, it's like taking a glove off, right? Your skin is your glove. Zoop, off, just exposed to the world. All the muscles and arteries and whatever else is in an arm. This one too. Holy mackerel. That is despicable. Love a good degloving scene in a movie though. Always, always very raunchy. <laughs> it's, just, it's just garbage. Um, inside, inside trash can. <laughs> Don't Google inside trash can. You will see gross garbage, <laughs> stinky banana peels, rotten meats, oh. empty cola bottles. Don't Google it. It's bad. <laughs> You're gonna get um, uh, people's half-eaten hamburgers, oh, no. maybe a rat, maybe a stinky syringes. rat, <laughs> syringes, raccoons. raccoons. You, never you never know. You might get um, like you know when you eat an apple and it's just the core. You could see that, and you know that's not tasty. Apple cores? Mm -mm. Ugh. Nope. Oh, man. What else could you find inside a trash can? You might never know. A hairless bear. <laughs> Everyone. There he is, a hairless bear. Google it to your heart's content. I think that's lovely. It looks just terrifying, but I know it's a bear and I know that it's hairless. Who who decided to shave a bear one day? Who, just, who woke up and said, you know what we should do? We should take our clippers to the bear and just totally remove all of its hair. Like they, they had a bear in captivity it probably wasn't too happy about it, you know. Bears aren't uh, aren't the best pets, <laughs> and then they decided to shave it. How much you want to bet this happened in Russia? This was something that a a Russian individual uh, took on as a personal project: is shaving a bear and showing the world what it looked like. Char massacre was an incident during the War of Dagestan filmed and distributed on tape in which Russian prisoners of war were executed. Throughout the war, Russian soldiers reported finding taped executions of Russian officers and men in an attempt to frighten enemy soldiers and advertise their deeds. Some videos were later sold as snuff films and ended up online. And I'm not gonna look too far into this one because I don't feel like watching a snuff film today. I don't wanna watch real people die. That's just me though. Oh, Jesus Christ. Ew! 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 You need to go see a dentist! Yeah. Ew! It's larva! Ew, it's bugged! That's what I was gonna say, it looks a little puffy. Like, I thought it was just raw. I, I was gonna say, like, I literally wanted to, like, squeeze it because it looked puffy. Ooh, no, why like, would you want to squeeze that? Because it looks like there's something oh. on the gums. It would just. <laughs> no! What is what? this? If you're searching for pictures of moth larvae, be careful not to accidentally type the word mouth. Mouth. Because then you'll get these images of mouth larvae. A wet koala? <laughs> this feels like something you shouldn't Google because like it puts you on a list, you know? <laughs> like it's one of those things that like safe search will block you. You do it at school, you get suspended. <laughs> The FBI keeps like a tally of people who are Googling wet koalas. Like, mm -hmm, yeah, all right, well, this guy's a psycho. All right, I'm gonna Google it right now. I feel like this first image isn't enough. I need to see if I Google wet koala, what comes up. Oh, just more of the same. <laughs> oh, no way. No way. This is a hoax. I Googled it. The reason I shouldn't have Googled it is because I would have found out this is a hoax. Yeah, the mouth looks kind of uh, ridiculous. It looks like a, a werewolf mouth or something on it. So this koala isn't actually that terrifying. It just is kind of like disheveled and wet. It's kind of like when you like give your dog a bath, you know, like what you thought was a big floofy chunk of a of a mammal is now like this weird like skinny shivering <laughs> dripping thing. <laughs> It just doesn't look the same, and then you gotta towel them down, and then it looks like a dog again. A lamprey. Classic, classic lamprey. I mean, why wouldn't I Google a lamprey? I wanna see all those teeth. I wanna think that every time I go swimming in a lake, I'm gonna get attached to by one of these things, and it's gonna slurp up my blood. And uh, then I'm gonna, you know, sit out of the water, and you just see like a freaking lamprey on my arm. It'll be beautiful. 
Is it like a leech where it's like you have to like get it removed properly or else it could like leave something in you? I bet you, I bet you it is. Look at those greasy little eyes. My goodness, these are an invasive species too, you know? If you find a lamprey, it's probably not supposed to be there. Shoo! <gasps> Stop it, stop it! I don't even, there's no sound and I'm whipping these off. What kind of spider is that? Oh, it's an image for sure. I'm just gonna- Is that a huntsman? Is that a black widow? What is it? Oh, it is a huntsman. It's a huntsman. Yeah, spider. those are from Australia, eh? Of course it is, eh? Terrifying. <laughs> Put some shrimps on the barbie and hope you don't get bit. Oh my god. What if you start <laughs> roasting and then just- and then you that. Right? Like you, you get your hand on the spatula on the grill and then spider just like yeah. jumps off your shoulder onto oh, your hand. What I do you do? I would start screeching like in Harry Potter, you know, when he's torturing <laughs> it. And it's like, hey! <laughs> <what you do." laughs> I mean, you could throw it on the grill and try to oh, eat it. Stop showing the pain. It'd be crunchy. Today. It'd be hairy. It'd, It'd be, be so hairy. <sighs> MH17 Aftermath. Malaysia Airlines Flight 17, Amsterdam to Kuala Lumpur, shot down in July 2014. It doesn't feel that long ago, does it? Yeah, that's just, that's just tragic. That is just something you don't, you don't want to hear about that. It's always, always really sad when that comes up on the news, eh? My goodness. Although I suppose, yeah, it didn't technically disappear like some of the other ones. It was shot down and then discovered. Ay, ay, ay. Tragic. Very tragic. Necrotizing fasciitis. Search in Google for necrotizing fasciitis. Necrotizing fasciitis is an infection caused by bacteria. It can destroy skin, fat, and the tissue covering the muscles within a very short time. The disease is sometimes called flesh-eating bacteria. When it occurs on the genitals, it's called Fournier gangrene. Necrotizing fasciitis is very rare but serious. I'm getting, like I literally like got a little shiver thinking about getting Fournier gangrene. Ah. Oh. No thanks, N-O-T-H-A-N-K-S. And I clicked images and I probably shouldn't have clicked images. Ooh, ooh, ooh uh, mm, okay, it's just gore. It's just a lot of gore. Uh, don't, don't Google that. <laughs> don't ruin your day. Welcome.